T minus 15 seconds. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Vehicles pitching down range. It is a beautiful day for launch, and Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Vandenberg Space Force Base with payloads for six of our rideshare customers on board Korea, Space BD, Citael. Deorbit, York Space Systems, and Planet IQ. Now, during ascent, we tilt the engines. The technical term for this is gimbling, and that turns the rocket horizontally in what we call a gravity turn. We're still going up, but now we are also heading horizontally away from the launch pad. Max Q. There's the call out from Max Q. So, moments ago, we throttled engines down in preparation Power for Max Q. Nominal. Good callouts there that power and telemetry are nominal on board Falcon 9. Max Q is a critical moment during flight because the combined stresses caused by Falcon 9 accelerating through the atmosphere and the ambient static pressure are at their greatest. Now, the rocket typically needs to go around 17,500 miles per hour horizontally in order to avoid being pulled back down to Earth and reach orbit, which is why we perform that gravity turn. You can track our progress to orbit by keeping an eye on the stage one telemetry in the bottom corner of your screen. Now we have six events coming up in quick succession. Miko, stage sep, S1 flip, SES1, boost back burn, start, and fairing separation. During main engine cutoff, we'll shut down the nine Merlin 1D engines, which is followed by stage separation. Nominal trajectory. Nominal trajectory on board Falcon 9. Once separated from the second stage, the booster will flip its orientation and begin heading back to Earth with a short boost back burn, while simultaneously the second stage MVAC engine will ignite for the first time, followed quickly by fairing separation. Nico. Stage separation confirmed. Confirmation of Miko and stage sep. And back ignition. Good call outs that we've had SES1. And boost back startup. And boost back burn startup. Fairing separation confirmed. So we've heard those call outs for those six events that happened back to back and got great views of several of them. That was Miko, Stage Sep, S1 Flip, SES1, Boost Back Burn Start, and Fairing Separation. We will be attempting to retrieve those fairing halves again today once they fall back to Earth using our recovery vessel, Go Beyond. Next up, we're listening to hear that we've completed our Boost Back Burn. Stage one, Boost Back Shutdown. Right on schedule. We are just about T plus three minutes and 28 seconds into today's mission. And the next critical milestone we're tracking is T plus six minutes and 42 seconds, when we expect to have some great views of the first stage's entry burn. For the entry burn, we relight three of the M1D Both engines. Both remain on a nominal trajectory. There we hear that Falcon 9 remains on a nominal trajectory. For the entry burn, first we will relight the center E9 engine, followed shortly after by E1 and E5, which slows down the vehicle as it passes back into the Earth's atmosphere. Great views on your screen right now of stage one and those grid fins as the booster heads back to Earth. We relight those engines to slow down and reduce re-entry forces, which ultimately helps us recover and reuse the first stage. During the entry burn, Falcon 9 is decelerating by firing those Merlin engines, but we're still moving really fast. This causes the vehicle to fly through Merlin's exhaust gases, also called the rocket's plume. And this deposits a layer of soot on the vehicle's surface, which is why our flight-proven vehicles tend to look so toasty. 
That soot comes from the carbon-based fuel that Falcon 9 uses. Now, as a quick reminder, at the request of some of our customers, we won't be showing any views of our payloads today. Live coverage will end after the first stage landing and successful shutdown of MVAC's first burn.